In this video, we're going to take a look at all the different settings that control the line weight, the line pattern, and the line style of all the different elements within Revit. The first setting we're going to look at is object styles. From the Manage tab, you'll find object styles on the left. And what you'll see here is a list of all the different categories that exist within the program. and a series of parameters that we can adjust to suit the needs of our project. Things like line weight, line color, line pattern, and even material can be assigned to different categories within the object styles. This is the baseline for how all of the different materials and all of the different items look within the project. This includes model objects, annotation objects, analytical, and imported objects. Each one of those is defined based upon different line styles, line weights, and line patterns. Line weights are defined by a system of 1 through 16, and each different scale that you see here is assigned a value, and in this case, in inches. This works for model line weights, perspective line weights, and annotation line weights. The line styles are going to define the different types of lines that we can use to embellish our views. So things like hidden lines, thin lines, medium, and wide lines can also be defined based on their line weight, line color, and line pattern. Line patterns can also be defined and created within Revit. A handful are available with the stock software, but we can also create new ones by defining the pattern based on whether there's a dash or a dot, and we can give that dash a particular value. Then we can define that as being a space, maybe a dot, another space, another dot, and so on. And this can be a custom setting that you create yourself. All of those settings within object styles, the line patterns, and the line weights all can add up to a more custom environment tailored towards your type of work. Each view has its own properties as well. This would be the visibility and graphic overrides. This looks very similar to what we saw in the object styles, except for one thing. We have a number of checkboxes here, which are going to define whether if a category is unchecked, or checked, whether it'll be visible or, uh, or not visible. If a category is unchecked, it's not going to show in the view, but checked, it will. Notice how when I'm selected on columns, I'm seeing a bunch of things that say override across the view. The reason it's saying override is because these settings within visibility graphic overrides will only override the object style setting for this specific view. If I were to make a change to something in this view for, say, like walls, and I adjust the cut lines to be a different color, for this purpose, we'll change it to magenta. You can see here that the cut lines for our walls are now showing as magenta. But if I were to go to a different view, they're staying the same as black. That's because the change we made here in this floor plan was based off the visibility and graphic overrides, which means it was a view specific setting. I can go back in and I can clear the overrides so that it's back to the object style settings. Another way that I can override the object style settings is by element. I can right click on an object, I can override it in view, I can hide it in view, and I can even change it based on just its element. So if I wanted to change just the cut lines for that particular wall, I could do that as well. And this change is only going to occur to the selected object. 